Hi, this is Beatriz and in this video I'm going to show you how to transform your selfies into professional looking business portraits. I'm sure that you've been in the situation where you need a professional looking portrait. Maybe you need to update your LinkedIn profile. Your colleagues are asking for a portrait of you to use in a corporate presentation. Perhaps you want to add a nice picture of yourself to your website, but you just can't find any. So you grab your phone, you take a selfie, or maybe you ask someone to take a portrait for you. We all know how most of these things turn out. In the best case scenario, you've taken a portrait of yourself with your phone in front of a white wall and with a good amount of natural light. So you've end up with something like this. And this is quite a decent picture, it gets the job done, but still it doesn't look professional. In the worst case scenario, you've taken your self-portrait in a dark room, probably using artificial light or perhaps just trying to use the small amount of natural light that you can get. You are standing in front of a busy background and your picture is underexposed, it's really dark. It looks something like this. So how do you turn these pictures into professional looking portraits? Easy, we are gonna be using Photoshop and I'll show you step by step how I turn this picture into this. Let's dive into it. So I've opened here the picture that I took of myself. This is the worst case scenario. So I'm gonna demonstrate you how to turn this into something that looks more professional. The first thing I'll do is to duplicate the layer. This way I will be able to do the before and after so that I can compare both images, the edited one and the original. So let's just call this original. Now with this layer selected, I will go to the selection tool and click on select subject. So as you can see, this is gonna create a selection of myself and separate me from the background. This is a bit of a busy background, so it might not do the best job. So you can of course zoom in and correct the selection if it was not done properly. So I'm gonna include this. And for now, let's keep it as it is. And now we're gonna create a mask with this selection, which means that the background is gonna disappear, it's gonna be masked, and just this area selected, which is me, is going to be visible. So let's go ahead and that's it, created a mask. Let's zoom in a little bit. So you can see here that the hair was quite okay-ish. There's something wrong here, so we can go to the mask. Make sure you have white and black selected here. And we are gonna use white if we want to reveal a part of the image that was masked, or black if we want to hide it. As you can see here in the thumbnail, my silhouette is in white, which means white is the visible area. And the rest, the background, is in black, which means it's the part that I hid. There's something here that is bothering me a little bit, so I'm going to mask it. So I'm gonna go to the brush tool, make sure that I have a soft brush selected with 0% hardness and with black selected. I'm gonna mask this area. Like this, it's okay. Next thing I'm gonna do, the composition is not correct. So I'm a bit far, this cuts a bit weirdly, I don't like the position of my hands. So I'm just gonna crop this picture. I think I'm gonna go with five by seven for this picture. Okay. So next thing we're gonna do is add a background. If you go to a professional studio to take a portrait, you are most likely gonna get this picture taken with a white backdrop and there's gonna be uh, this sort of vignette effect caused by the light hitting on the backdrop. So we're gonna add a gradient and by default, the color that appears here is the foreground color that you have selected here. It's okay, let's just go here. We can go to basics and here you will have by default black and white. Let's click okay and now create a radial mask and reverse it. This way you are creating a vignette. So we are gonna move this a little bit so that it looks like the white backdrop from the studio with light pointing at the backdrop and then the vignette effect that originates from this light here. So let's click OK and let's bring this layer underneath. Okay, now this looks really dark, doesn't look that nice. So let's go ahead and create a curves layer. So let's bring this curve quite up so you can see that it increases the brightness. We don't want the backdrop to be affected by this curve adjustment layer, so let's just pin it to the image below. And now we're gonna play around with this curve a little bit to improve the appearance of this image. So let's bring the highlights a bit down now let's move this part of the curve so that the shadows are not as strong and there's not as much contrast. 
And I also like to fade the blacks a little bit, and I do so by moving this part of the curve up. Okay, this looks already much better. You can see the difference. So now this portrait is a bit flat, so I want to create a little bit of volume. And I'm gonna do so by creating first a curves layer to create highlights, and then a curves layer to create shadows. Basically, I'm doing the dodge and burn technique, but I always do it this way. So let's first increase this a lot, and then invert the color of the mask. So as you can see, this doesn't have anything because this effect is hidden as the mask is black. So I'm gonna take a brush and paint in white over the areas where I want that highlight to be applied. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So let's decrease the opacity of the brush and the flow a little bit, just about 40%. And now let's start painting. You want to add highlights on the T-zone, so here on the forehead and also on the nose and in other areas of the image where you see natural highlights. So I see a little bit here on my cheek, also here. You can also add a little bit of highlight here. Let's decrease this a little and add a bit of highlight here so that the under eye circles are not as visible. And overall, you can see the effect. Now this has added a bit of volume to the image. Let's do the same with shadows. So let's take a curve layer, bring this down, invert the layer, and with white selected again, let's paint over the areas where we want shadows. So those are also areas where there's natural shadow, which is around the face. So let's start here, cheekbone, under the chin, and where you can see that there's shadows. Sometimes it might feel like you are doing nothing, but if you go here, turn on and off the preview of this layer, you can see that we've actually done quite a lot. And if you feel that what we've done here is too much, what you could do is decrease the opacity so that it feels a bit more natural. Let's group this so we can see the full effect. So as you can see, now the image has a bit more volume. You can always come back and add more if you feel like it needs more. What you could do is also to decrease the opacity of the whole group. Now I'm gonna also do this touch and burn on the clothes. So let's emphasize also the areas where there's natural highlights, like here. You see through the folds in the clothes where the highlights are. There's highlights here, here. And you always want to emphasize what's naturally there. And again, maybe it doesn't feel like we've done much, but if we just switch on and off the preview, you can see how there's a difference in the clothes. And then let's do the same with the shadows. Now we need to change also the color temperature because this picture is a little bit too warm. So let's go to hue and saturation and let's decrease a little bit the saturation. And now let's go to yellows decrease the yellows. And again, I am clipped to the image below, so I'm only affecting this area of the image, not the background. Let's do the same with the reds. And now I'm gonna add a color balance adjustment layer. It's again a very subtle change, but it also makes a difference in the end. I feel like I need to do also dodge and burn here in the arms because I can see a lot of contrast between the areas where I did it and then these arms where I didn't apply it. I also feel I can add a little bit of rouge in the cheeks. It's gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna copy the hue on the lips to create the blush. And now I'm gonna apply the blending mode. I feel like the one that fits better is soft light. And I'm still not convinced by the hair. I feel like it's a bit too dark at the moment. So I'm gonna go to the layers where we were doing the dodge and burn. And I'm gonna do the same also on the hair. The edges of the hair look pretty rough and lack detail. So I will create a new layer and with a small dry brush, less than 10 pixels, I will start drawing hair. I will get a color sample of the area where I am going to draw using the eyedropper 
and I will keep doing that whenever I move around or whenever I feel that the color doesn't blend in nicely any longer. It seems like a tedious process, but it only took me about 5 to 10 minutes to go around the head, improving all the edges. And you can see how big of a difference this makes. The picture is pretty much ready, but I will still do some fine tuning in Lightroom. I will edit a bit the white balance and the light of the image. And also add a little bit of clarity. Now let's head to the Tone Curve panel to improve again the appearance of the areas with highlights and shadows and emphasize them more. I will do some very subtle color corrections on the HSL panel. And this is very important. Since the quality of the picture was not very good, I will use the noise reduction tool to make the image look less pixelated. And because we don't want the image to look too washed out, I will add the same amount of sharpness as I added for noise reduction, so about 40. I will also go to the red curve and add a bit of red to the shadows and green to the highlights. Finally, some more vignette, and that's it. This is the result. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Also, let me know in the comments below what type of videos you'd like to see next. Have a nice day and see you next time.